algebra 2 students in this video today we will continue to use to use the properties um, that we learned in the first part of lesson 8.3 the only difference is that in today's video we will be expanding logarithmic expressions instead of condensing them <coughs> sorry excuse me let me get some stuff moved around here and okay here we go um, so with that in mind, here's your lesson, here's your heading for today. Expanding logarithmic expressions. Lesson 8.3, part two. Be sure and include today's date, like I always say, so that your notes are organized. Yesterday's heading said, condensing algebraic expressions. Okay, that was yesterday's heading. Today we're gonna do the opposite. We're going to expand them, okay? So with that in mind, here we go. I think it would be smart to quickly go over the properties we learned in part one of the video um, from lesson 8.3. Here are the properties we learned, the brand new ones. Now remember, this one right here was, you can take a number that's being multiplied times the logarithm and move it here, or the opposite's true. You can take an exponent and move it to the left, okay? Um, whenever you're adding two logarithms that have the same base, you can write one logarithm with the same base, as long as you take your two arguments and you multiply them. Well, the opposite's also true. If you have a logarithm like this, in which your argument is multiplying, you can split it up into two logarithms, and that's what we're gonna do today. Lastly, we learned um, that if you're subtracting two logarithms that have the same base, you can write one logarithm with the same base and take your two arguments and divide them. Well, the opposite is also true. If you have one logarithm where your argument is dividing, you can rewrite it into two logarithms, okay, um, and expand it. And that's what we're going to do today. Now, um, I said it's kind of funny. I knew this sentence was coming up. I'm not going to go over these again, but actually I just did. So anyways, it's fine. Please understand these are the same properties we are going to use today, just like we used in the part one video. This is the same properties we're going to use to expand our logarithmic expressions. So I'm not going to give a lot of teaching today. There's no need to. I'm going to jump right into the examples. Excuse me. <coughs> so here we go. All right, let's get after this. Here's the first problem we're going to look at. I would like everyone to copy that into your notes. I want to tell you what you're looking for. You're looking for multiplication and or division and or exponents, okay? You're looking for any of these three things. Are you listening to me? You're looking for any of these three things to see if they exist where <coughs> in the argument. Got it? They must exist in the argument. So understand those are the three operations you're looking for now. Exponents should be the last thing you look for. Don't worry about that, okay? That'll kind of come naturally, okay? These are the main two things you want to look for. So when I look at my argument, I see that I have multiplication. 7 times x to the 4th. Does everybody see that? So I am multiplying how many, for lack of a better word, I'm going to use the word things, okay? <clears throat> That's the word I'm going to use throughout the video. How many things am I multiplying here? Two, a seven, and an x to the fourth. If I'm multiplying two things, then write two logarithms. That's easy enough, isn't it? There we go. Now, the first part of your argument is 7, so you put a 7 here. The next part of your argument is x to the 4th, so we put that here. Now the question is, do I put a plus sign between the logarithms or a minus sign? Well, these two are doing what to each other? Multiplying, so I would put a plus sign here. Okay. Now, never leave an exponent when you're expanding. Never. Never leave an exponent when you're expanding. So this 4 right here needs to be moved to the left of this logarithm. So we're going to pick up this 4 right here, make it a little bigger, and we're going to put it right here. There we go. And that 
what's your answer? So this expression right here, um, this expression right here equals this expression here. Okay. Now there was something else I wanted to say. I'm forgetting what it was. Um, oh, let's quickly go backwards, and, and, and you're going to see you're going to get the exact same thing we started with. Yesterday I taught you how to condense logarithms. Remember, so we have the same base, so that's good. We're going to put a log base three. We never want to condense until we move our numbers here from the left up here. So we'll do that. Now the two logarithms are adding, so we take this here times this here. And look at that, if I take this and I condense it, I get this, which is exactly what I started with. Okay? So we're just going backwards from yesterday. Let this sink in, okay? Let's try a couple more of these. All right, let's expand this logarithm. <coughs> you can work out or you can watch me. That's totally up to you. Okay, remember what I taught you. We're looking for multiplication or division or exponents. But exponents are the last thing we worry about. Mainly we're looking for multiplication and or division. Well, I see multiplication in my argument. How many things am I multiplying? One, two, three. So I'm going to write how many logarithms? Three.
if I can get it to click there. All right, and we'll put that right here. And there we go. That's your answer. Logarithm base 2 of 7 plus 3 times the logarithm base 2 of x minus the logarithm base 2 of y. This is the exact same thing as this right here. Pretty cool, huh? Last but not least, um, I think. No, we have two more. All right, now this one here is really tricky. Um, so please pay, p please play, play, please pay close attention. All right, here we go. <clears throat> I want you to expand this as far as you can. So you say to yourself, self, I'm looking for multiplication, division, or exponents in my argument. Division should be first. I see division. I'm dividing two things, a numerator and a denominator. So I'm going to write two logarithms. Notice my base is 10, so I do not have to write 10 if I don't want to. So I'm going to write two logarithms. Top of my fraction goes right here. Now there's a trick to this. Don't wait. Feel free to work ahead, but keep your eyes up here. There's going to be a very common mistake you might make, okay? There. Now here's where it gets really interesting. Let's go back to the last problem. When I had a minus sign here, did I break this logarithm down anymore? No, I did not. Does everybody see that okay? So it really didn't matter that I had a minus sign here because I didn't do any work to the right of that minus sign, okay? But in this problem over here, I've got a minus sign that a logarithm. I've got to break this thing down. Here's what I want to show you. Please watch this carefully. This argument here has two things being multiplied. So I know I'm going to break this down to two logarithms. This logarithm here has two things being multiplied. I'm going to break it down to two logarithms, but listen, I'm going to start first with this one. You are subtracting. Guys, you listen carefully. You're going to miss this. You're going to blow this. Okay? This subtraction sign goes to the whole logarithm. So if you choose to break this logarithm up into two logarithms, this minus sign goes to both of them. So put a minus sign, listen, and then put a parenthesis. You must do that. Now, I have an argument here with two things being multiplied, so I'm going to write two logarithms. Three goes here. Y goes here. They're multiplying, so put a plus sign. We'll take care of this negative sign later, okay? Now, you can put parentheses if you want, but you don't need to. There's no negative sign right here. If there was a negative sign here, you put the negative sign, then put parentheses, because this negative sign goes for the whole logarithm. So it must go for this whole expression right here. But we don't have that scenario, so we're okay. Notice my argument is multiplying. How many things am I multiplying? Two, a five, and an x. So we're going to write two logarithms. Put the five right here. Put the x right here. They're multiplying, so put a plus sign here. Okay, now we're almost done. Now students, this negative sign goes to both logarithms. So your final answer must look like this. You do not multiply the negative sign times the 3 and times the y. That's incorrect. You multiply the negative sign times each logarithm. So negative times a positive is negative. Negative times a positive is negative. And there we are. Okay. Now we're finished. How do I know that? There's no exponents anywhere. Now there is something I want to say to you. You need to hear. Um, before I go on to the last problem, please listen carefully to this. You need to know how to condense problems like this. I was not very satisfied with the difficult difficulty level of your homework problems. So how would you expand this? Really, how would you expand this? Well, you would just go left to right. Take these two right here and put them together. They have the same base. I think I said, how would you expand this? How would you condense this? Write the logarithm once. The two logarithms are adding, so five times x. And then bring down the other two logarithms. Now we're going to condense these two logarithms here. Okay? So, logarithm... Uh, 5x um, we're going to uh, put these two logarithms together right here so the 5 and the x and the 3 are dividing because we have
have a negative sign here. So 5x divided by 3 is division because of your negative sign here. So 5x over 3. And then bring down your last logarithm. Do you see how we did this? We just went left to right, guys. We could ditch the first two, the next two, not the last two. They both have the same base. We write one logarithm. Now be careful. We have 5x over 3. Right? The two logarithms are subtracting. So 5x over 3 divided by what? 5x over 3 divided by what? Y. Well, that's the same thing as what? When you're dividing fractions. 5x over 3 times what? 1 over y. You flip the second fraction. You multiply. So 5x times 1 is 5x. 3 times y is 3y. And booyah, this is exactly what I had up here. Go back and watch that gift. You need to. You should be able to expand problems like that. Okay. I'm sorry I said it again. I apologize. You should be able to condense long problems like that. Okay. All right. Last problem. We're done. I'm telling you now. The logarithm logarithm base two of seven equals this. It's rounded off, of course. And the logarithm base two of twenty one equals this. Without using a calculator, I want you to find the logarithm base 2 of 147. How in the world, Mr. Earhart, what are you talking about? Well, I'll think about it. Do I know the logarithm of 147? No. Notice, though, all of these bases are the same. Do you see that? So, what about this? Do I know the logarithm of 7? Yes. Do I know the logarithm of 21? Yes. How about if I could make this 147 something different like this? Instead of 147, let's put this. Let's put 7 times 21. What is 7 times 21? 147. Why would I, Mr. Eric, why would you use 7 and, and 121? Why not use 3 and 49? They equal 147. Well, I'll tell you why. Because my two numbers up here that I know the logarithm of are 7 and what? 21. So I'm going to use those numbers. Now, look how easy this is. Expand this. I have an argument that's what? Multiplying. How many things are being multiplied? Two. So I'm going to write two logarithms. This is so cool. Watch this, guys. Bring the 7 here. Bring the 21 here. Because the arguments are multiplying, put a plus sign. Now, what does the logarithm of base logarithm base two of seven equal? Two point eight one plus what does the logarithm base two of twenty one equal? Four point three nine. Add those two together and you will get let's see zero carrier one, two carrier one, seven, seven point two oh. And if you don't believe me, type this into your calculator with your change of base formula. Log of one forty seven, enter divided by log of two, enter and you'll get 7.20, of course, rounded, okay? So we'll be doing some of those problems like this in your homework also. Guys, I hope this, I hope these notes have made sense today. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or email.